and welcome aboard. In uh, this video, um, I'm using the scenario special delivery because it's, for the most part, straightforward. Point A to point B, straight run. Uh, in response to several videos I've made where I end up doing cold starts. And it just so happens that special delivery was one of those scenarios that I did with a cold start. And the other one, Ballast Boogie. I'll be cutting to the point uh, just before uh, the area in the scenario that this video will focus on. Without doing the entire uh, scenario, and this is just the introduction, so you know where it starts. As I get into the video, I do my best to explain what I should have done, but didn't do, as I should have. Now, let's get into it. Between the information received from another player and the info I found online after doing a bit more research, which will be on screen as I go along, and yes, learning what I should have before doing these scenarios. But on, uh, onward and forward. This is a clarification, explanation, tutorial-esque type of video. I did do cold starts due to power loss to the drive axles. I was confused didn't understand and didn't know why it was happening well the reason being it's twofold really as to why this was happening one it's not in the owner's manual and yes I did read through it and was not expecting this to happen no pictures no diagrams nothing even close to the catenary having a neutral section in it and what you should and shouldn't do with the MCB. Nothing even close to that. And it's on me. So I didn't do my due diligence and doing the proper and mo better research to get a better understanding of the newer electrified trains in train sim wheel four, those being the BR193 Vector, the uh, high speed LNER, and um, I'm sure I'm going to butcher this one up. The oob. The oob. Sounds like the oud. Uh, if I, again, I do, I'm not doing it on purpose. Just uh, um, have a hard time pronouncing that. And I tried learning. The videos I made will be linked in a title card. And I ask that you please watch them because this will make more sense and, and show why I was confused and didn't know what needed to be done with the MCB or that there was a neutral section in the catenary, as I call it, the neutral zone. I came to find out this is all for the protection of the locomotive, the locomotive's uh, electronics, as well as the uh, pantograph and more on this in a few minutes. The one thing that is in the owner's manual is how to change from voltages by lowering the pantograph. Again, I'll have more on this in a little bit. Essentially, this is all about safety. And the information provided here, there'll be a lot of information on the screen, along with the links to where the information came from, and a little fair bit more of information will be below in the description. I'll cut it here. The one thing I did want to point out real quick about the catenary is that it's a zigzag. It's not completely straight. And the reason for that is that if it were to be a complete straight run with no zigzag in it, it would literally put a groove, cut a groove into the pantograph pickup area. And um, I never really took much notice about this and didn't understand. Um, but just a little tidbit that I picked up and for those that didn't know or didn't understand why, that's it. 
it's basically so the catenary doesn't cut a groove into the uh, pantograph. Again, all that information will be in the description below. Okay, see you in a bit. Again, using the information provided by another player, as well as the German Railway signage website, as I approach and pass Nundgritz Station, that I'm using as a landmark, because I'm, you're, moving at 120 kilometers per hour, everything passes by very quickly. And this is why the signs and information relating to the neutral section and the catenary will be up on the screen, be it now or uh, as I pass uh, the first station, Nunkritz, and the next station is Glaubitzriese. As I approach and pass that station, the signs in the neutral, in the neutral section is almost immediately after. Now, I hope I've said the names of the stations somewhat properly, and if not, I apologize. Uh, I'm trying to learn. There's not a lot of time here, so if I seem to be reading a little bit fast, I apologize. Uh, the signs uh, that were, or are, or will be on the screen are to let you, the driver, know what to do with the MCB and when to use, use it as the signs show, rather than wait for the train to lose power like I did in the videos I already made. Rather, you need to open and close the MCB as shown by the symbols on the sign along the railroad to avoid uh, an electrical search. This is for the safety and protection of the locomotive and its electronics, as well as the pantograph, because parking electricity and electronics they don't mix. If you don't open the MCB at the proper time, the system will, within the train, will open the MCB circuit. Basically, if you don't do it, the train will do it for you. It's a surge protector. Basically, is what it comes down to. Please pause the video as needed to read the information on screen because there is so much information. I'm doing it like this because it gives you a much better and clearer image of the signs you need to keep an eye out for, as well as the information that explains the meaning of the sign. And if I were to read all this, it would make the video much, much longer. There's just too much information and not enough time. Please believe me, between these two stations, there's not a lot of time. And this is why I'm moving at roughly 50 kilometers per hour. The neutral section, as I coined the neutral zone in the catenary, is made for maintenance. And when there is a need to change the voltage from, say, 15 kilovolts to 25 kilovolts. And it's made of a non-conductive material like fiberglass or something similar. And this break in the catenary is what's called the neutral section. As a pantograph passes through this section of the catenary, you could get a spark or an electrical surge and could damage the pantograph as well as cause the MCB to open for the protection of the train and its electronics, as I just mentioned. And this is where you, the driver, should open and close the MCB as the signs show. So this doesn't happen. Again, I reiterate, sparking electricity, electronics, and the possibility of a surge do not go well together. So that's where the safety and the protection of the train comes in with the use of the MCB. And I still have a little bit of time here between stations because I deliberately let the train go this slow. I almost forgot and figured I would add it here since I have a little bit of time. When you see the second sign, it's telling you, the driver, to increase the performance of your locomotive. I'm taking it as you need to make sure your train is at the speed limit to be able to safely pass through the neutral section. Normally, um, I probably would have been passing uh, Glaubitz Riesa by now. And again, I apologize if I sound like I've been speed reading almost, Maybe even fumbled a couple of words here and there. Um, 
but there is just so much information and um, but I hope this is helpful and useful to all uh, this uh, next short clip um, it's about roughly 10 seconds long you'll see a stopwatch on the corner of the video and uh, the reason why I this was done uh, with the help of my daughter is to show how much time you have to react I guess you could say that's um, not a lot of time when you're going at 120 kilometers per hour. So that's the whole point of this uh, next short clip. I'm going to be doing a, the same thing, but much slower. I'm going to be going slow enough so everybody can see the signs before, because it's, like I said, this is a pretty big station. It spans across a railroad crossing. So I'm doing this slower, at slow-mo, if you will, to see the, um, the signs. And um, there'll be some text tracking that'll be done. They're going a little bit too fast, but that's the second half of the station. Normal FOV. Yeah, this is about yeah, it's 35 kilometers per hour. Okay. Get ready to open. This is open MCB. I'm not gonna, I wanna keep it normal FOV. But if you look, you'll see the uh, drive axles turn yellow. And then that sign was close MCB. There you go. And it looks like we're coming up on Globus Reason now. So I'm gonna focus on this portion of uh, in the in the um, on the screen and where the uh, the switches are and the main circuit breaker uh, rocker switch. This sign here indicates to prepare to open the MCB. And uh, don't mean to be that loud, but by the time you get to this next sign, the MCB should be open. You notice that my uh, drive axles all turned yellow. It's gone. We're in the neutral section. That last sign indicates that it's safe to close the MCB. So there we go. Everything turned not yellow. Also, if you see that uh, symbol at, on the front screen in front of you, the main screen represents a circuit being open or closed. It, mean, it would indicate that the MCB is uh, open and needs to be closed or the pantograph is down for some unearthly reason and needs to be raised then the MCB has to be closed and then turn the train line on to start and you're good to go good practice now whether you need to do that here or not I'm not completely sure because again it's not in the manual it's not there <clears throat> there is a bit of information that I did want to show and touch upon a little bit here. Currently, I'm already past the neutral zone, neutral section in the uh, catenary, as you can tell. The screenshot that will be up on or has been or was already on screen tells you how to drop the pantograph to change from one voltage to another. And if you're going, let's say, you're going from Germany to Austria, okay? Those two countries are neighboring, and they use different voltages. You would need to drop the pantograph once, and then once uh, past the change, you can raise it back up and be on your merry way. 
And um, hopefully it's not information overload. But again, I just want to be as concise and as provide as, in, as much information and let you, the viewer, decide how much you want to read or what you want to know or don't want to know. Hopefully this uh, will explain um, why you need to do all of this. And again, this could be strictly uh, on the BR193 Vectron uh, locomotive and its associated scenarios. Well, there's not that many scenarios. I'm more referring to the timetable scenarios. I don't know. I haven't done all of them yet. Um, this could also be the same thing with the newer um, OB, uh, OBB, it's, I know, I'm having a hard time pronouncing OB, um, and the LNER line. Now, I've done a couple of those scenarios, not completely, but uh, because I was testing a modified INI setting, um, working with a mod author. So it could be on those, it could not be, I don't know. Um, I just know that I've noticed this on two particular scenarios with the, with the BR193 Vectron. Some may take this as uh, I'm hammering one entity or person or individual. No, I'm not going to get into all of that. That's not what this is about. But then again, at the same time, I wouldn't be making this video if the information was in the manual. And I did look at the manual. This is all new to me, and I'm sure there's many other people who have still um, trying to get their head wrapped around Train Sim World 4 and the newer trains, and uh, they're completely new to uh, Train Sim as a whole. But anyway, I hope is everyone watching this finds it informative and useful. It'll answer some questions that others have run into and didn't know what was going on, like what happened to me, as well as for anyone that may be new to Train Sim World 4 and found this helpful, useful, and informative, as well as answers questions you may have run into and didn't know what was going on and why, or well, like I did. Basically, my hope is you've gotten some useful information out of this. And it is the reason when I got Train Sim World 3, I got the owner's manual and went through it, basically to find uh, answers uh, for things like this. So thinking I'd get the same answers, I got the manual for TSW4, Train Sim 4, and unfortunately that was not the case. But the things I didn't understand and came to learn of, I read up on it. As I said earlier, these trains are a whole new ball game. If you feel that I've missed uh, something, let me know. If you have any suggestions, please, by all means, let me know. Constructive criticism is always welcome. You know, I'd rather get things right and give people proper information rather than misinform and getting it wrong. And I do tend to be a perfectionist. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate you all being here. If it's your first time here, thank you for stopping by and hanging out with me. Come back anytime, one and all. Again, köszönöm szívesen, gyertek vissza akár mikor, és uh, ha látta valamit, amit szerettél, nem szerettél, szóljatok. With all that said and done, please leave your comment below. Smash that thumbs up, like button, subscribe and share. Take care, and y'all come back now, you hear? Bye-bye for now.